Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Andrew and welcome back to another Clip Studio Paint tutorial video. So for this tutorial video, what I wanted to show you guys is how you can create a false vanishing point or false perspective using Clip Studio Paint tools. So I've already made a video on how you can use Clip Studio Paint's um, perspective rulers. So I'll leave a link in the description for that video if you're interested in that. I recommend it because we're going to be using some of those tools here. And also, uh, I did a tutorial video on how you can create a five-point perspective, which is not one of the rulers that Clip Studio provides, but using the tools of Clip Studio Paint, you can create a five-point perspective, which is like a fisheye view. Uh, so I'll leave a link for that video in the description as well if you're interested. Uh, but before I get started on the uh, tutorial, I just want to thank all my viewers and subscribers for uh, uh, subscribing and for liking the video. So if you're new to the channel and this is the first video you're seeing of my channel, please consider subscribing. I make Clip Studio Paint tutorial videos like this. And uh, also answer questions. If you got any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. If I can't answer them in the comment section, I'll make a video of it. And um, so everybody can learn from that question as well. So anyways, let's get started. So the, what I'm going to do, well, first of all, what is a false point perspective? So uh, the simplest uh, explanation I can give is um, we usually, when you do a, a perspective, um, you usually have, in this case, let's say a, a one point perspective. So a one point perspective, you have one vanishing point. And which I indicate here with the VP. And so that means that anything you draw uh, has to go to uh, that vanishing point, but not not almost, not everything. Uh, basically, any lines that go into the page or out of the page, however you want to look at it, uh, has to go through that uh, vanishing point. So let's say if you wanted to draw a cube, you would have to uh, draw it in this way just give me a minute so I can draw this out real quick oh, let me go back here so I'm not using Clip Studio Paint's uh, perspective tool for this I just wanted to basically just illustrate this real quick um, Anyways, so this is a one-point perspective of a cube. What you'll notice is that any lines that are going, like I said, into or out of the page has to follow this uh, vanishing point uh, direction, which basically means that as you get uh, closer to this area, the, these two lines here, th this line here and this line here, it becomes wider here, but then it starts shrinking over here. This is that perspective illusion that we're creating in this uh, two-dimensional page. But what you'll notice is that also um, any anything that goes uh, vertical or horizontal um, in this manner, those lines are parallel. Um, they will never touch each other, as opposed to these these lines here that will touch each other eventually in the vanishing point. Okay, that's. That's a, a one point perspective. Now, with a false point perspective, uh, what this allows you to do is, um, like to say if I wanted to draw another cube on this side over here, it would still meet those same rules. You would still have to follow those same rules. But let's say that you wanted to rotate this cube, because in the real world, not everything lines up this way. In fact, one of the best examples is when people try to draw a room full of furniture, you'll notice that all the furniture matches up with the vanishing point. And while technically that is correct, in a real world, nobody s aligns their furniture perfect, right? So. Some of these items will be tilted or rotated in such a way 
that they don't actually fall in line with the vanishing point. So in this case, let's say, uh, let me do an, a different color here. Let's say that I, wa I want to take this cube here and I want it to rotate it. So um, what you would see is this, so this is the center of the axis, right? So this cube has this bottom uh, face here that we can't see, so I'm drawing it with uh, dash marks. So here's the center of the cube, and we want to rotate it this way, right? So how can you do that in a uh, one-point perspective? Um, and you can do this in any perspective, actually. But for the simplest explanation, or the simplest way for me to demonstrate this, is for in a one-point perspective. So uh, what we're going to do is rotate this cube by um, first drawing it in two dimensions. So let me create a new canvas. So um, what I'm going to do is actually put in a one-point perspective correctly. And I'm going to do that here using... Again, if um, you want to know how to use the uh, perspective rulers in Clip Studio Paint, uh, there is a link in the description for that video that I've already done. So I'm going to speed this up so you guys don't have to sit uh, too long to watch me uh, draw this. Okay, so um, there, so maybe I didn't speed it up, but I made a cutscene or whatever. So we're at this point. The reason I do this is because I need to create a grid to represent the floor. Okay, so I'm going to use a different color here so that we can see where the vanishing point is. The vanishing point is right here. Ooh, I can turn off the, let me turn off this ruler real quick. So um, what I've done is I used a one point perspective ruler to create this grid which will represent the floor. And then I turn off the ruler. Again, uh, reference the perspective ruler video tutorial to figure out how to do that. Um, and so now what this allows me to do is um, I'm going to pick one of these squares on the floor to create a, uh, a, um, a, a, a cube, right? Um, actually, before I do that, I don't, I don't even have to do that. I'm going to go up here in a different layer, a new layer, and I'm going to create a just a square. Um, I'm going to use my line tools here. Again, I have a video for line tool tutorial. Uh, again, check the description uh, for that link to that video. And so here's a perfect square. It doesn't matter how, how big you um, it needs to be. We'll be manipulating the size of it here in a little bit. So I'm going to use my marquee tools or the what the selection tools. I'm going to select rectangle. I'm going to keep it as close as possible to the square drawing. And this is one of the, the cool tools about um, the easiest way you can do it using Clip Studio Paint tools. So what I'm going to do is uh, select this uh, scale rotate option here. And if you notice, my cursor turns into these uh, double arrows, which allows me to rotate, right? But before I do that, actually, what I need to do is create a copy. So I'm going to create a copy. So now I have two squares, and now I can rotate it. And you can see that it rotates without moving the center. Just rotate it as, as much as you want. It doesn't matter right now. This is for the example. I'm going to create another copy. And rotate it again. This is so just uh, so you guys can see um, the rotation of this of this cube, right? I don't even know if I need this many. Regardless, so uh, to make things easier, I'm going to change the colors of each of these uh, using this option here. If you come over here to the right hand side, you'll see this little blue and white square. It's called the layer color. If you click it, uh, you can select any kind of layer uh, color you want and then just dump it into this uh, bar right below it and it, that'll change the color for you. 
uh, and then because what I want to do is I want to easily see the different rotations so I'm going to leave the original square black and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse all these layers and they're going to retain the same color okay so now we have this um, this square here and I yes so it's all one piece okay that's that's what we want and so now what we can do now is uh, using the transform tool well first uh, we're gonna select it and we're going to uh, again click the the little circle here uh, and this will allow you to move it and I'm just gonna pick this square right here and so usually the one of the first things I do is I try to line up at least one side of the square so it just so happens by luck that this black square lines up with this blue square right down here on the bottom now if it doesn't line up for you you can always uh, change the size of your reference here this uh, square but I'm just gonna leave it like that I'm gonna hit OK and now what I'm going to do is actually you know what let me see if I can get a little bit tighter again you will I, what I usually try to do is stay as close as possible to the edge to the complete square oh that's not enough sometimes it's hard but um, it it's it's more beneficial for you if you keep it uh, close as possible so now that you have it selected now we can go to the transform tool which is under file no edit I'm sorry edit transform and I like using the free transform there's a perspective uh, transform but for me free transform works the best and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up these four corners of the black square with the four corners of the blue square on the floor now these two bottom blacks uh, the corners of the black square are already lined up so all I gotta do is line up the um, the four corners of the black square now it takes some manipulation because sometimes when you move like I said like I did right here I moved the top squares not but then my bottom ones moved so it takes a little manipulation but you can uh, get it close as possible as you can or as however uh, comfortable you feel again it's only for reference it's not it's not an exact science and so there's uh, the black square is now lined up with the the blue square on the floor and essentially what we just just did is uh, we we took that square on the floor and we rotated it so now what you can see is that um, let's take um, the purple square for instance I'm going to use the purple square so now what we can do actually let's take the red square it's it's the most tilted um, what we can do now is I'm going to create a new layer on the very top um, just with black and I'm going to use my line tools and if you go from this corner of the red square and you take it all the way up till you get to your vanishing uh, not your vanishing excuse me your horizon line right past the horizon line and then you take this corner of this square and you do the same thing it's it would supposed to meet right there where that line met so there is your first uh, false vanishing point right there where the horizon line is so this is a false vanishing point one and then you can you'll do that for the same side or the other side of the of the red square right I might need to uh, zoom out a bit so that I can see so it's right here and right there you want to see the two points of the red square this point and then this point you want to keep those uh, when you create your line here you want to maintain touching those two points 
So I can see that the other vanishing point, it should be right here. So this will be false vanishing point two. This was the original vanishing point. And so again, go back to the red square, this point, and then this point. And it should just line up to this vanishing point. And you can see that, give or take, it, yeah, it's pretty close, you know? And so now, what we have is a, um, is a false vanishing point. So, um, we can say, like, our room, like, if you were to draw a room, it would all go to the real vanishing point. But let's say you had a chair in your room, but your chair doesn't line up with the real vanishing point because the chair is tilted or it's rotated in such a way that uh, it, it goes into these false vanishing points. So um, let me just draw. Yeah, we'll use this point here. So I'm going to turn on this perspective uh, ruler again. And in here, I'm in red, I'm going to draw, wait, which cube was it? Okay, I'll use this one. So here, again, okay. Uh, I just lost it again, sorry. This cube, okay. So I'm going to draw just a cube, right? And because I have my perspective ruler on, these lines are, are lining up perfect for me. And so this is what a cube in this, in the real perspective, in the real vanishing point um, looks like, right? Well, let me draw the, the stuff you can't see, right? And, but if you um, create this false perspective here, um, I'll draw the cube in black. The thing is, is that uh, you will now have to create two uh, vanishing points. So, again, refer to the um, the vanishing point or the, uh, the perspective ruler tutorial videos for how you can create vanishing points. Um, so, I, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the perspective ruler add vanishing points and I'm just going to click here twice and here twice and so go to my editing tools again all this is explained in the um, in the perspective ruler tutorial video so I, and all I'm doing right now is just aligning my guide my guidelines here to uh, so that I can see that. Let me lower this a bit. Wait a minute. Why? What is this? Let me turn off one of these perspectives. Okay, that's that one. Okay. Nope, come on, come back on. There you go. Let me turn this one off. Okay, so I've turned off the the real vanishing point, and I left the uh, the false vanishing points on the ones I just added. And so now I can take my uh, pin here and just. So what you'll see now is that um, the lines match up to the to the new vanishing point. zoom in a bit so that I can erase and so here is that same cube but just uh, oops did I draw it on top of I sure did let me draw it on on a new layer 
so I lowered the opacity for those these guidelines here but as you can see so here's my cube this will be hidden I guess I didn't discuss how tall you would have to make it so that the cubes would match, but don't worry about that right now. So there is that. All right, so let's turn that perspective ruler off now. And so now you can see that um, the red cube and the black cube are the same cube but just uh, rotated and so uh, that's what the cube this cube is in is in this uh, one point perspective here the vanishing point here but it's rotated and so uh, to create that we had to create the two um, the two false vanishing points understand and so that's a false vanishing point perspective uh, using clip studio paint tutorial videos so i hope it wasn't too confusing um, i hope you guys learned something if you liked the video make sure you give it a thumbs up uh, and if you are not subscribed please consider subscribing i make clip studio paint tutorial videos like this one and if you got any questions make sure you leave them in the comment section of any of my videos and uh, if uh, I can't answer it in the comment section I will make a video about it and so we could all learn something and again thanks for watching uh, I plan to make another video where you can actually draw a room with the furniture and um, some of the furniture will have a false uh, vanishing points to them and so there's a really quick and easy way. It's kind of similar to what I did with this uh, cube here. But, um, and the trick wasn't actually mine. I saw it in, in one of the Clip Studio Paint videos um, that the Clip Studio Paint uh, puts out. But it's, it's really a cool trick. And um, so, yeah, so that'll be my next video. I'm not sure when actually I'll put it out, but uh, look forward to that. So, again, thanks for watching. And I will catch you guys in the next one.